Peter, thank you so much for, for your time. Thank you for coming. Um, and welcome to Montenegro. Lovely to be here. Beautiful place. You know, New York Times called you a rock star who knows everything about social media and then some, right? Is there a difference between how sales and marketing works today and maybe several years ago? And what this difference is? Well, I think it's a lot easier today to understand your audience and to understand your customer. I think the problem is very few people do it. You know, very few businesses take the time. They spend millions of dollars on, on brand awareness and on audience engagement and that, but they don't actually do the simple human things that matter. You know, I don't, I don't need a brand to tell me to have a nice day. But when I have a problem, I need to know that someone at that brand hears me and can fix my problem. And I think a lot of companies spend too much time trying to be cute and trying mm -hmm. to be... Uh, you know, oh, look at us, we're edgy, and, and when in fact we just need basic uh, awareness of, of what's going on. What do you think um, is an ideal customer journey or experience which we need to build while thinking of our clients? A customer needs to understand that, that they, or rather, a customer needs to feel that they are important, that they matter. They don't need to be treated like a rock star, I mean, it doesn't hurt, but they don't need to be treated like a rock star, they don't need to be treated like a god or, or you know, they just need to know that they're getting what they're paying for and when they have a problem that someone is going to respond to them. You know, um, so many brands spend so much time making memes on Twitter and do, but don't respond to the basic, hey guys, I'm having an issue. You know, I don't need um, Chase Manhattan Bank or Chase Bank to tell me how to save money when, you know, you want to help me save money? Drop your $30 a month fee uh, for using ATMs, you know, don't yeah. don't try to patronize me and and tell me that you're doing this when in fact you're not, and the sole goal of your existence is to generate revenue. You know, everyone has the right to generate money, but don't don't essentially there's a, there's a quote, don't don't pee on my head and tell me it's raining. Okay. Right. Don't sit there and and say, oh, we want to help you to do that, and then charge me thirty bucks for this and twenty bucks for that and fifty. You know, there are people who who have trouble making the making their monthly rent and so if they go below like a hundred dollars in their account mm -hmm. or something chase charges them a thirty dollar maintenance fee well now they're only at seventy dollars right now they had they let's say they were at 90 now they're at 60 and now they only have sixty dollars to use and now if they, they can't pay their rent now they bounce a check that's another fifty now they're two hundred dollars in the hole yet chase is going to tell me not to skip that latte and make more money come on is social media is the best way to listen to your customers? It's one way to listen to your customers. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'd love to see is more businesses stop chasing the likes and start doing more likable things, mm -hmm. right? You have a chance to listen to a customer every time they walk into your store, every time they buy something online. You know, I, I remember when I was renting a car uh, at Avis and I tried originally to go to Hertz and they didn't have my reservation and they lost it and they didn't this and that. And I went next door to Hertz or to Avis and Avis was so nice. And they smiled. And after the experience I had with Hertz, Avis could have stabbed me in the eye. Yeah. I would have still used them. They just, they, they were nicer. You know, everyone's trying to get the likes and get the follows and get the, just be decent. Everything else will come. So what do you think is the best way to create connection with your clients or with your potential customers? A lot of what I talked about in the, in the talk relates to that. It's the premise that being transparent, being relevant to your audience, understanding what your audience wants, when they want it, giving them the way they want it, being, being brief, uh, being sort of top of mind and not wasting their time. You know, we work in an office, we go out for lunch, we put on our customer hat and we expect to be treated well. We come back in, why do we take that hat off? Leave the hat on and treat your audience how you'd like to be treated. What do you think is going to be the next thing after the internet? Because first one was electricity, then the internet. What, what's going to be the next? Wow, electricity, then the internet. Well, there are a few things in between that. But uh, I think that, you know, we're looking at a tremendous change when 5G comes into place. Mm -hmm. not, not just because of the speed, but because it's really going to open up the 2G and 3G networks to be able to be used for things other than data, or things other than like pictures. 2G and 3G can be used for wearables. I'm on a train, my watch detects that I'm, my heart's going into AFib, my watch talks to the train, which talks to the hospital, which stops at the next station, and there's someone waiting for me with a, with a, 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 a gurney, all automatically, because the 2G network is now empty once 5G is there. So I think speed, la low latency, it's going to be huge. Once you say that entrepreneurship is lonely, why? What do you mean by that? Because 
most of us don't have friends who are entrepreneurs. We have friends who do regular jobs. My wife, when I was married, was a creative director, and she um, worked at a regular job. I did not, she didn't understand what I did. And when I had a bad day, she couldn't fathom that I had a bad day. In her mind, so you work for yourself. How could you have a bad day? Well, it doesn't happen. Then you have other entrepreneurs who you tend to battle with, and you tend to, you know, you're trying to each get the best product, and no one wants to admit they're having a bad day to them. So it does get lonely. You have to find your tribe of people you can trust and people who understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and who are there to have your back. That's super important. You're an, an angel investor and you prefer to invest into the companies on early stage. Which companies or industries or projects you're investing to and what is the criteria? So, <clears throat> <clears throat> while everyone's running after trying to find the next Uber or Lyft or whatever, I like to invest in things that companies like Uber and Lyft use. So I'm a heavy investor in HR technology, human resources technologies, yeah. in, in capital technology, stuff that um, I'm, a, I'm an early stage investor in a company called Namely. Namely is uh, HR cloud-based. Mm -hmm. So everyone needs HR. I don't care how small or big your company is. So I like to invest in the things that every other company is going to need. So what is the something that most people can be, um, you know, can learn after they lose it? Oh, what do I get from, from failure? Yeah. Failure is awesome. I love failure. The beauty of failure is that it, you can learn anything. If you don't learn from failure, there's something wrong. I don't want to hire anyone who hasn't failed. I want to hire you after you fail because if you fail, that means you've learned something, and from that I can get, uh, I can learn more about you and, and, and learn w what you've known. The greatest people to hire in the world are ones who've had spectacular failures, because if they, are, if they learn from that, their next job and their next, what they create next is gonna be even better. And what kind of people you're looking for when you, when you want to bring Yeah, I love team. hiring people who have failed. I love hiring people who understand that, um, you know, a failure doesn't mean everything's over. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I try to avoid people with drama. I try to avoid people who have issues. I, I look at the concept that, I always ask myself this question, whenever something goes wrong, and I'm like, oh, I'm having a bad day. I stop and I, or, and I, I hear people say, I'm having a bad day. I ask myself, I'm like, are you really having a bad day or are you having a bad 10 minutes that you're gonna let ruin your day?